Hi, my name is Daniel and for the last seven years I competed in the Olympic multi hull class, the NACRA 17. But I'm also a sailing instructor and on this channel I want to share all my knowledge about sailing with you. So let's get started with how a sail works. There are two different ways how sails work. By drag and by lift. We start with sailing by drag, including a bit of sailing history. Then we move on to sailing by lift, including the concept of airflow, different states of the sails and how to spot them, and a little experiment. Sailing by drag. A long time ago, people have tried to cross all kinds of water. Lakes, rivers and oceans. Most likely they used some sort of rowing for the propulsion. But it wasn't very long after that, that they discovered that it is easier to hoist some sort of sail to reach destinations which were basically in the direction of the wind. I figured that out when I was five years old that it was harder to ride my bike against the wind than to go with the wind. So mankind probably did before me. And this very early form of sailing, rowing upwind and sailing downwind stood there for a very, very long time. Just think about the Vikings who even used an oar for steering or the Romans in the galleys. Even the big square rig chips like the clippers or most wind jammers could only go with the wind. And it was not until the late 1950s that the era of sailing cargo vessels ended. The last ship that sailed around Cape Horn without an auxiliary engine was the flying P-liner Palmier under Captain Werner Björkfeld and during the last wheat regatta. She was the last ship that rounded the horn because she was overtaken by a sister ship, the Passat, a bit earlier. Unfortunately, the Palmier sank in a storm in 1957. Only a few weeks later, her sister ship, the Passat, almost was lost in a storm as well. And both incidents marked the ultimate end of the full rigged sailing cargo vessels. Interestingly, one of the flying P-liners, the Padua, is still used as a sail training vessel. She is now called Kruzenstern. I find it really fascinating that the age of the sailing ship was not stopped by the appearing of the steam engines. It was not until the diesel engines took over, until these huge dinosaurs could retire from transporting wheat, saltpeter, barley or wool. Ok, back to topic. So it's not hard to explain how to sail with the wind. Just put a stick in the middle of your boat, let's call it mast, and put the biggest sheet of canvas you can find or forward on it, and there you go. If one mast ain't big enough, just add more masts. But the important thing here is that the wind has the power to move our boat. In this first case, it's by drag. More drag equals more speed. And that's even true in modern times. That's why we hoist a huge spinnaker when sailing downwind. The concept of airflow. Okay, enough of the history lesson here and let's move on to modern sailing. The most important thing about a sailboat are, of course, the sails. They drive the boat and they translate the power of the wind into speed. So it is important to always keep an eye on them and understand how they work. Basically, that's the thing. If you understand how a sail works, you can sail almost any kind of sailing boat out there. That's why it is so important to understand the principle of it. So let's talk about airflow. 
What you want to have is air flowing on both sides of your sail, just like on an airplane wing. It is much more effective if you have that stream of air both on the windward and the leeward side. Here I want to make an experiment together with you. You just need a piece of paper and yourself. Hold the paper in front of your mouse like that and now blow underneath it. What you see here is the first principle. The wind has the power to push things away. Or more precise, by blowing underneath your curved paper, you create an overpressure on that side and that will lift the paper up. But now, let's blow on the upper side of the paper. If your laws of physics are the same as mine, the airflow will lift the paper up as well. Fascinating, isn't it? What happens here is that the airflow on the curved piece of paper create an under pressure that will lift it up. If you want to know exactly how the physics behind that work, you can ask your doctor of physics of trust or let me know in the comments and I will cover it in a future video. It is important that you know that this explanation is overly simplified to make it clear that both sides of the sail are important. If you are interested in a more precise description of the forces involved here, just type in Bernoulli effect in Wikipedia. But now you hopefully understand why both sides of the sail are important and maintaining the airflow is crucial for proper sailing. If you ignore one side of the sail, you lose force that you could otherwise use for more speed. On the curved piece of paper, we have seen that the airflow on the curved surface generates enough force to lift it up. On a sailboat, the sail is attached to the mast, which is attached to the hull, and also the curve of the sail is adjustable, it stays more or less the same. So any force that applies to the sail will affect our whole boat, and just like the paper moved in the experiment, the boat will move as a whole. Let's move on to a more practical approach. The sail can have different basic trim states. Let's start with a completely open sail. The wind will flow along both sides of the sail and there will be no deflection and the sails will not produce much power. Small pressure differences on both sides make the sail flap. When you are new to sailing, a flapping sail can be a bit frightening, especially in a sailing school where there are multiple boats next to each other, always the sail hoisted. That can be very loud and it's also not good for our material. Sails are expensive and we try to minimize the time the sails are laughing. Oh yes, a flapping sail in nautical terms is called a laughing sail. Now we sheet this sail just a little bit in. We will see that the sail slowly starts to fill with the wind. Most sails start to have a counter curve in the area behind the mast. This is called backwinded. This counter curve is a good sign that your sail is a bit too open. If you open more than that, the sail will start laughing again. If you continue to sheet the sail in, the counter curve will disappear and you will establish an airflow on the leeward side first. In trimming term, this state of the sail is called under trim, meaning that the sail is a bit too open. When trying to find the correct trim, always start from this direction.
the next state of the sail is the correct or optimum trim. You will have air flowing on both sides of the sail. And if the whole trim is perfect in all areas of the sail. When learning to sail, it's a good starting point to play with the main sheet. Open it until the sail is too open and sheet it in until you have the optimum trim. Then open it again. Things on a sailboat are constantly changing and moving. The wind is constantly changing. If you sail faster, the wind will change direction and it will get stronger just because you move faster. So there is no one and done setting. You always have to play with the sail, the trim and the steering to produce as much speed as possible. But what happens next? I mean if you sheet in the sail even more. You are getting in the zone of overtrim. You maintain the airflow on the windward side, but you will get some turbulences on the leeward side of the sail. If you think back of our little experiment, that's not good, because you lose power. The problem is that this is a bit harder to spot. If you are unexperienced, it will even feel faster. That's because the boat will heal more, you will create more turbulences in the water, it will get a bit more noisy, but all this usually slows you down. So how to find out that your sail is hauled in too much? One way is by experience, because if you know your boat, then you know how fast your boat is in certain wind conditions. If you lose a good bit of your propulsion, you will notice, at least when there is enough wind. Light wind conditions are a topic of its own, but I try to make this video not too complicated. I really try. The next way is to look at your telltales, which brings me to the next chapter. Telltales. So how can we figure out if we have an airflow on our sails or not? The answer is simple. We stick telltales in them. For most tasks, a few pair of telltales are enough. A pair of telltales consists of one telltale on the windward side and one on the leeward side of the sail. If you have the correct sail trim and the wind is flowing along on both sides, the telltales should point aft on both sides of the sail. If the sail is in under trim, so it is a bit too open, or you point too high, then the windward telltale tail will make some strange things. If the sail is in over trim, so it is sheeted in too much, or you are pointing a bit too low, then the leeward telltale tail will make some strange things. Most likely it will be in the lee of the sail, getting no wind at all and just hanging down. Sometimes you also have telltales on the aft edge of the sail. These telltales can indicate if you have a proper airflow all along the whole sail. They can also indicate if the sail is too close to the wind. It is maybe the right time to mention that you also change the angle of the wind if you steer and don't correct the sail trim. That's kind of important. For now, just remember that you can affect the sail trim by steering and by adjusting the sheets. But more on that in the video about beating and tacking. Summary. We can use the wind to drive our boat. The oldest known way is by drag and we still use that principle when the wind is right behind us. We can use the airflow on our sail to reach destinations that are not in the direction of the wind. 
Maintaining the airflow on both sides of our sail is crucial for good speed, so constantly checking the airflow is important. We can check the airflow by looking at the telltales. If the windward one is behaving strange, the sail is too open. If the leeward one is behaving strange, the sail is too close. Wind is constantly changing, so you always have to adjust the angle of the sails. I hope you find that video helpful and interesting. With my approach I try to help all kinds of different sailors. It does not matter if you are new to the sport or if you are an old salt. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next one. If you want, you can leave a comment or a question down below. So farewell and adieu and I hope in a short time to see you again.